Well, we've had a couple of really interesting questions that talk about the trade-offs that climate change creates for us or creates the need for. One of the questions is, do the does the solutions create more problems or are they just impossible to pay for or to do? And a similar question is, will the solutions to climate change do more damage than climate change itself? So I wanna start by unpacking what you mean by solutions because there's a range of different ways in which you can think about solutions to climate change. Obviously the big solution to climate change is that we reduce our global emissions and hopefully we actually start to draw carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and start reducing the concentration of carbon dioxide that's currently in the atmosphere that over the long term will actually reduce uh, the heating effect that we're currently already experiencing. So in terms of mitigation, it's certainly true that there are some solutions that may well create more problems. For example, if we went to nuclear energy, there are obviously significant risks associating, associated with choosing that particular energy pathway. Some might say that those risks are more manageable than runaway climate change, but there's no doubt that there are a different set of risks that are created if we go down that path. Similarly, even if we decide to go down the path of significant upscaling of renewable energy, which seems to be the most logical strategy at this point, there are still going to be some adverse impacts. For example, uh, large solar panel farms require very large areas of land. Uh, wind farms involve uh, risks in relation to bird species involving bird strike and so on. Everything that we do has some kind of impact. And the challenge we face is to strike a balance between the kinds of impacts that we're willing to tolerate. And many people take the view that climate change has such profound long-term existential risks that some of those other risks are worth trading off and accepting in the short term. The other kind of solution to climate change is things that we might do to adapt to the impacts of climate change that we're already facing. So we could, for example, change the kinds of crops we grow to make them more tolerant to heat or more tolerant to drought. We could design our cities in a way that means that they don't absorb as much heat and make them easier for people to live in. Those things wouldn't have adverse effects because they would actually have win-win outcomes. They deliver additional benefits. They use less water for crops. Um, they are capable of being used in a wider range of uh, growing environments. And our cities would be more livable if we put more trees in and developed better urban green spaces. But there are some adaptation interventions, for example, building a seawall to fortify the coastline from rising sea levels that definitely will have their own sets of problems. So for example, um, that would affect the, the natural systems, the, uh, the mangroves, the seagrasses, and the other aspects of natural coastal systems, but it might also suck away a lot of the beach. You might think that a seawall would protect the beach, but actually the way in which the wave action interacts with a hard seawall, um, it actually drags sand out to sea. So we would affect the recreational values of our coastline. There are trade-offs in those kinds of adaptation decisions. Finally, there's this third group of solution to climate change, which are the more radical interventions that are aimed at perhaps uh, trying to deflect uh, the sun's radiation from the Earth's atmosphere just for a short period of time while we get all of those other solutions in place. You might have heard these referred to as geoengineering or hacking the planet. The technical term for these kinds of interventions is solar radiation management. There are a range of different suggestions. Some people talk about putting mirrors up into space, space to reflect the sun's energy back out into space. Uh, the, the most common consideration is one that would involve um, taking, uh, distributing very, very fine sulfate particles into the upper atmosphere to simulate a volcanic eruption because that has been demonstrated to have this shield effect for a very short period of time. 
Now, those kinds of technologies definitely could have um, impacts that are comparable to the planetary scale of climate change itself. And for that reason, we don't want to rush into them. But by the same token, we need to understand them. We need to know whether they have potential, whether there are circumstances in which they could be used safely, uh, and uh, whether we could actually think about those kinds of geoengineering interventions, at least to bias a little bit of time whilst the international community starts to take really serious action on emissions reduction. All of the things that we do are going to have some risk and some trade-off. The balance that we, we face is between short-term and long-term risk, risk to some groups, benefits to others. And those are very, very difficult, complex uh, policy decisions. So they were a great set of questions from the Peregrine School. Do the solutions create more problems or are they just impossible to pay for? And from uh, the grade 10 class at St. Mary's, um, will, we, will we do more damage by providing these solutions? Thanks very much for those questions. I hope that this has given you some hint of an answer.